Bitwise operations provide programmers with a way to operate on signed and unsigned integers at the binary level. This means they work directly on the binary digits inside a processor's register. Bitwise operators include AND, OR, XOR, NOT, and operators to perform logical, arithmetic and circular shifts. Bitwise operators can make efficient use of a computer's memory and, because bitwise operators in a high-level programming language often have equivalent commands in the processor's instruction set, they are fast. Bitwise operations have applications in graphics, data compression, crypto systems, embedded control systems and more. In this video, we'll focus on the AND operation. An elementary understanding of binary will help you to get the most out of this video. It will also be useful if you've previously met logic gates. Here's a 16-bit CPU register with a binary value stored inside it. Typical computers these days use 32-bit or 64-bit CPU registers, but the principles of a bitwise AND operation can be illustrated perfectly well with a 16-bit register. 16-bit registers were more typical of computers in the 1970s. This register contains an unsigned integer. In other words, it's being treated as a positive whole number. This integer has been encoded with 16 bits, namely 2 bytes. Normally, integers require 32 bits, that's 4 bytes, but for the purpose of this discussion, we'll stick with 16-bit integers. Looking at the place values, you can see that this is the number 22 in Denary. Here's another 16-bit unsigned integer. This is 93 in Denary. When the AND operator is applied to these two integers, corresponding pairs of bits are compared. If both bits of a pair are 1, the output is 1. Otherwise, if either bit of the pair is 0, or both bits of the pair are 0, the output is 0. To put it another way, only when one bit and the other bit is a 1, will the output be 1. Looking at the place values of the result, you can see that this is 20 in Denary. 22 and 93 is 20. Let's take a look at this in visualbasic.net. I've got a very simple user interface here with nothing but a button on it. And here's the code for the button. I've declared three integer variables, x, y, and z. I've assigned 22 to x, 93 to y, and here's the operation, z equals x and y. And then I'm outputting z with a simple message box command. Let's take a look. 22 and 93 is 20. And here it is in JavaScript. I've written a function called bitwise and operator in the head section of my web page. And in there, I'm declaring three variables, x, y, and z. I've assigned 22 to x and 93 to y, just as I did in vb.net. And then I'm calculating z by anding x and y together. Notice that the and operator in JavaScript is the ampersand. The result is output using an alert, and the program is triggered by a button on the web page. Let's see. Same result. And here's the same thing again, but this time in Python. Notice that Python also uses the ampersand as the AND operator. Same result. So how is the AND operation useful? One simple example is to check if an integer is odd or even. With a binary integer, all of the place values are even numbers, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, except for the rightmost place value, which is a 1. This means that any number with a 1 as the rightmost bit must be an odd number. Here's an odd number, 341, with a 1 as the rightmost bit. It follows, then, that if you AND any binary integer with a 1, the result will be a 1 if that number was odd. 
The AND operator is particularly useful when it comes to manipulating bit flags with bit masks. Consider, for example, the central heating in a house with eight rooms. This control system needs some way to represent whether or not a heater is on in each room. A program could be designed to use a Boolean variable for each room, which would be set to true if the heater is on, or false if it's off. With eight rooms, this would require eight Boolean variables. Alternatively, the program could use a set of eight bit flags, which together occupy just one byte. If a particular bit flag is set to 1, it means that the heater is on in the room represented by that bit position. If it's 0, it means the heater is off in that room. Here you can see that the heating is on in the bathroom, the kitchen and the living room. This system needs some way to test individual bit flags, to check where specific heaters are on. To check whether the heater is on in the kitchen, for example, we can apply an appropriate bit mask. This bit mask is a byte containing a 1 in the position that represents the state of the kitchen heater. When the byte containing the bit flags is anded with the bit mask byte, the resulting byte will contain a 1 in the kitchen position if the kitchen heater is on. This means the resulting byte will have a non-zero value. If, on the other hand, the kitchen heater is off, the kitchen position in the resulting byte will contain a zero, and hence the resulting byte will have a value of zero. This can be tested with a program. Here's the pseudocode. Needless to say, if you want to check if the heating is on in a different room, you'd need a different bit mask. In this example, a bit mask is being used to check to see if all of the heaters in the upstairs rooms are on assuming that's where the bathroom and the bedrooms are located in the house. If the byte that results from anding the bit flags with the bit mask is identical to the bit mask, then we know that all of the upstairs rooms, and only the upstairs rooms, have their heaters switched on. Here's some pseudocode to do this programmatically. In this final example, an AND bit mask is being used to turn off the bathroom heater and leave every other room as it is. Notice this time that the bit mask contains all ones except for a zero in the bathroom position. When the bit mask is applied using the AND operation, the resulting byte contains the desired new state for each heater. The resulting byte can then be assigned to the bit flags byte, overwriting the existing value.